been a really good day. Just wanted to make a little quick video. Um, the info I'm getting off of YouTube has been really helpful and uh, awesome. What a great resource, you know. Uh, one of the biggest things I've kind of taken from the stuff I'm watching is that we have to listen to what our body's telling us. And, um, you know, that's a whole nother level of awareness we have to step up to, to be healthy. And so I'm just really thankful to have access to this stuff. I, it's funny how I was so busy at work the last, I don't know, I worked like December, January, the first part of January was just great. I mean, it was insanely busy. And then it just dropped off. And kind of like, uh, I started having the problem I've been having. I, I think I have like irritable, irritable bowel. I, I don't, some, it's something definitely irritated. And um, I don't know exact diagnosis. It really doesn't matter. But um, I've had all this time off. And during this time off, I've been learning all this information, you know, about keto diet and... Um, Watching the videos on the vegans helped me because the people who were, you know, ex-vegans. Because it helped, it helped me because I needed to hear what they were saying, you know. I've always kind of held on to this idea that, oh, I should be a vegetarian. That's the only way to really be spiritual. And um, I just got to let that stuff go. You know, I got to eat what I need. Um, sugar, sugars are bad for me. They always have been. I've known even when I was a kid, you know, I would eat sugar and I'd get like hypoglycemic later. You know, I'd have like a big insulin spike and then I'd feel really like lightheaded and dizzy. And uh, it runs in my family. My mom is the same way. And even though I'm thin built, I've still had like my blood glucose has been kind of, you know, getting higher and higher. And kind of like borderline diabetic actually on my, um, my um, blood test which is crazy right I mean I, I was like I can't believe that's true but you know during this exercising that I was doing trying to lift weights and trying to gain muscle and stuff I mean I did I did gain muscle but I also made myself ill and um, also it made my blood sugar up you know it's nice right now I mean my belly flat nice and flat and I'm getting my definition back and I'm afraid I'm gonna lose a little bit of strength in the short run just because of the process of my body you know learning to use the oils yeah, the higher fat diet to use it for energy instead of using sugar all the time I was thinking about how much I used to eat like during the day you know I'd eat like you know, you're eating every three hours you're eating something it's just too much and it's all carbohydrate not healthy also I was drinking a lot of coffee I was drinking six cups of coffee a day I've been doing that for like the last you know 10 years maybe I don't know probably 10 11 years I've been doing that and um, it's funny because since I started feeling ill I did have no desire. I actually, I was at work one day and I had two cups of coffee and that was it for the whole day. And I didn't even have a headache or anything. So the next day I was like, well, that's all I'm going to have. I'll just have three cups of coffee. That's half of what I usually drink. And I've been doing that for the last three, four weeks. And then actually, honestly, I mean, I, like I will have a cup of coffee when I go get my daughter from school just because I like to sit in my car and have a cup of coffee while I'm waiting for her. And I've been putting butter in the coffee, so at least it has some nutritional value. And, and I like coffee, but what I'm getting at is I haven't even really had the desire for it. And honestly, it, I think it was also um, upsetting my stomach. Um, so I've cut way back on it, and I feel better. And then I was having an interesting experience today. I was just share with you guys. Um, I had a, I was watching someone's channel the other day and um, she was talking about um, 
uh, animals and stuff. I can't remember exactly what brought it about, but I had a pet, uh, a steer. When I was a kid, we raised steers for our family meat. And we had an acre, and usually we'd, we'd, we'd raise two. And one would be the neighbors, and then we would split one with, an, with another neighbor. So we would get half of a steer. You know, we had a big deep freezer. And we kept that full of the meat from the half steer that we would butcher every year, pretty much every year. And um, so one year we had one named Toro. Well, I named him Toro. He was a little baby. We'd get him when they were about, I don't even know how old. And um, I'd feed him by hand and I made a pet out of him. I thought he was really pretty. He had like uh, black and white, had a really, really kind of a handsome, you know, uh, look to him and so I made a pet out of him and I I don't know how old I was I might have been 11 12 I, I don't know maybe 12 and um, he was big you know he grew you know they get big he's a big animal he had horns you know we never cropped the horns or anything like that and um, I would go out and he'd be laying out there in the field and I'd go out and lay it you know I remember when he got his um, castration you know when they get the castration done and he was very very he went and laid down in the field and he was all sad you know because he was in pain it hurt you know so I went out and laid like up against him kind of on him and just petted him and stuff and he was he was just really tame you know but at the same time he wasn't really a pet because like one time I remember I was petting him all right he came over to me and I was standing up against the fence and he came over to me and I was petting him and he started like he wanted to play it wasn't aggressive he just wanted to play and he started putting his horns like this and um man I just dropped straight to the ground and rolled underneath the fence because he could have easily broke my ribs or you know he could have he could have injured me very, very severely with those horns. I mean, you're no match against one of these animals. They're just big and powerful, and they don't even realize it. I mean, he wasn't. He was just plain. But um, anyway, we, you know, he got he got butchered at the end of the year. I didn't watch. I usually would go out and watch, and the guys would pull up in their the little meat truck, and he would get out with the twenty two, and the cows were, you know did walk over there like oh what are you doing in our field and he'd just pop them right between the eyes and they'd just go down like no pain no suffering they were just done and um it was very humane actually uh and my um when Toro got put down I of course I didn't watch that but you know I'd eat his meat you know we had his meat for dinner and I wasn't upset about it it was just like okay this is what he was. He was never really meant to be a pet. I made a pet of him. I knew what was going to happen to him. It wasn't like I was, you know, like, uh, you know, Charlotte's Web or something where I'm begging for the, you know, animal to be spared and live a long life and all that bullshit, really, is what that is. And um, but I had a thought today. I was listening to one of my new YouTube channels I found and um she was talking about talking about stuff and I just had this like image just popping in my head it was a spontaneous image of me sitting in a field petting Toro and it was just so beautiful you know almost like a it's just really pretty like flowers behind and the field was just beautiful green grass and he just looked so vibrant and it was just like wow you know <laughs> What a trip, right? I mean, I haven't thought of this animal in 40 years. I'm 50, and he's, I think I must have been about 10, maybe. I can't remember, 10, 11. I think maybe 10 when I made a pet out of him. But anyway, it was interesting that I had that thought. It was kind of like confirmation, you know. He's right there, and all is good. He's sitting in a really beautiful field just eating and munching on some beautiful clovers and stuff. I thought that was kind of cool, but anyway, hope you have a good night.